Hello, my name is Daniel Segovia and I'm going on with the MOOCs on wide antennas. First of all, I'm going to start with a brief review of vector potentials. Well, which is, when we are dealing with antennas, which is the first problem we have to tackle? Well, we have two different kinds of problems. First of all, we have in analysis problems where the sources are known and I want to find the radiated fields. And second one, I have a synthesis problems where the radiated fields are known, however, I want to find which are the sources. When I have these two kinds of problems to be solved, I can go to some electromagnetic tools. First electromagnetic tools is the set of Maxwell equations. In the set of Maxwell equations, the goal is to obtain the electric and magnetic fields in a particular kind of antenna from the actual sources such as the, density, the current density and the charge density. That's quite easy or quite straightforward in a problem such as this one where I have a dipole antenna, in this case a Jack the ray antenna, where I have the main dipole and in this main, main dipole it's easy to define an actual current and a charge density. But the situation is not the same, it's not the same when I have a horn antenna. When I have a horn antenna it's very difficult to define an actual current density or a charge density. So the most important fact would be to define a set of fictitious magnetic currents in a fictitious charge magnetic density in order to define, in order to have a common solution to the previous problem. The second set of tools is given by some auxiliary mathematic tools where I can define some vector potentials, some mathematic vector potentials which I call A and F and some Hertz potentials that I call phi E and phi H. Then let's start with our problem. When we try to solve the Maxwell equations, we, go, we reach a second order derivative vector equation such as the one as shown here. This set, of, this set of equations are quite difficult to be solved in a direct way because I have a second order differential equation and a second order differential vector equation. So it will be very helpful for us to define a set of magnetic of auxiliary functions that can help us to solve in an easier way the previous equation. The first, the first tool will be the magnetic vector potentials that come from an electric current A. And the second one will be an electric vector potential that comes from a fictitious magnetic vector magnetic current F. And the third one will be an electric corresponding scalar parts that are electric scalar potential phi E and a magnetic scalar potential phi M. These functions are only mathematical tools that simplify the way of solving the set of equations one that I'm pointing at this very same moment. So let us start with the tools I have just defined at this very same moment. I also remind that the, our goal is to solve this set of equations. We can do in a direct way departing from the electric and magnetic sources in a direct integral path such as the one is shown in the slides at this very same moment. But I can go through this set of auxiliary tools that I defined before through a set of vector, through a set of auxiliary potential functions A and F and phi E and phi M. And finally, as this is not my final goal because my final goal is to find out which are E and H, I can, go, I can reach this electric and magnetic field through a differential path that is given in this way. So let us start with the definition of the auxiliary functions. The first point is that we will start with the fourth Maxwell equation that is shown just there at the right side of the at the right side of the slide that is shown here. Then, as we are having the divergence of a vector equal zero, this magnetic flux is always a solenoidal field, and this solenoidal field can be written as the cal of a new vector field that will be called A. Then I can write down that the the magnetic flux is given by the curl of this new magnetic field, of this new vector field that I've just defined at this very same moment. And I can write down that the divergence of this curl equals zero. If I substitute this equation in the first Maxwell equation, it results that I am having the curl of this new vector E plus the differential, the derivative over T of vector E A, and this is and this equals zero. It's a straightforward from the previous equation. This states us that the vector under the curl operator directly comes from a gradient of a scalar field. So, if I substitute this previous result 
in the second Maxwell equation, I can write down that the cal of the cal of A is given by mu times the current density plus mu epsilon, the derivative over t of this vector that was defined in the previous equation. So, from these two, two sets of equations, it results that I have a second order differential vector equation that it is somewhat easier than the one I wrote down in the first slide. If I repeat the same process for the corresponding third equation, third Maxwell equation, it results in the corresponding counterpart of the previous equation too. And I have a second order differential equation, but in this point is a second order of a scalar differential equation. So, what I have at this very same moment is that I have the solutions of the radiation integral in vector potentials. I start from the actual sources j and rho. I am going to avoid this direct integral path and I'm going to go through a second integral path that has provided me these two sets of equations, one scalar 1 and one vector 1, in order to find the final electric and magnetic field from a differential path such as the one that is shown at this part of the slide. So, if I apply the same set, the same procedure to the so-called electric vector potential F that comes from a fictitious magnetic sources, I can write down that at this very same moment I will start from the third Maxwell equation, but the third Maxwell equation not for the real electric source that would appear here, but from a fictitious magnetic source. As this is zero, I will write down the third Maxwell equation in this way from here. So, at this very same point, I can define in the same way as I did in the previous set of slides a curl of a new vector field F. Then I can define that the d vector is given by the curl of effect, a vector, and then I can say that the divergence of the curl of this vector equals zero. In this way, I can do the same procedure but by substituting into the second Maxwell equation instead of in the first one. And then it results that I can have that the curl of the H vector and take into account the Sabindes that in this case is written down M because it's coming from a fictitious magnetic source will be equal to J omega times the corresponding D vector. In this case, I can say that the curl of the corresponding H vector plus J omega times F will equal zero so, if I have in the curl of a vector being equated to zero, I can state that this vector from here comes from the gradient of a scalar field. That is true, that is true, and from a similar analysis, it results that the corresponding set of potential vector equations are given for the case of the vector potential f that comes from fictitious magnetic sources can be stated in the way that it is shown here in this part of the slide that I'm pointing at. So, at this very same moment, if I summarize all the previous procedure, I'm really having that I start from electric and magnetic sources, not only electric one but also magnetic fictitious one. In addition to that, I could go through an indirect integral path to obtain the radiated electri electric and magnetic fields. But that is not the path I'm following because I'm trying to simplify in two different paths. So the first one would be a second integral path where I can obtain the corresponding second order differential, equa differential vector equation, uh, this one from here and this one from here, and also second order scalar differential equations that would be this one from here from the electric charges and this one from here from the fictitious magnetic charges. Once I've obtained these potential functions a and f and phi e and phi m, I can go from these potential functions through a differential path to the final radiated fields e and h. In, the first, in this way, as it was shown in the previous slides, but at this very same moment, what I really have is that I am having a magnetic radiated field that comes from the corresponding magnetic vector potential and from the corresponding electric vector potential and is given in this way from here as the sum of all the terms I summarized before, and I also have one electric radiated field 
that comes from the electric vector potential, potential ma uh, magnetic vector potential and from the electric vector potential that is given in the way that is shown in this part of the slide. So thank you very much. You can here have the reference. I hope you have enjoyed of this small small mock and you can further go on on chapter three of Konstantin Balanis and Thener theory analysis and design. Thank you very much for your attention.